Today we are going to see about advances in hybrid seed production of pearl millet or kambu. So generally, kambu is a cross-pollinated crop. So this cross-pollination is facilitated by its protogynous nature. So which means the female reproductive part will get mature than very earlier than its male reproductive organs. So around 20 percentage of uh, probability is there for self-pollination, and the major factor influencing cross-pollination or the pollen transfer is the wind. So wind is the major facilitator of cross-pollination in kambu. So in kambu, again, hybrid seed production is through CGMS, or it can be also termed as the three-line system because we are going to use A line, B line, R line as discussed in previous crops. So the major CMS source that has been identified by Burton GW in Tifton USA is the line called TIF23A. So this is the major CMS source in Kambu. So the steps involved in hybrid seed production is all same for the crops. The first one is the maintenance of parental lines that is your A line, B line and R line. So the next one is your commercial hybrid, uh, hybrid seed production involving A line and R line. So how to maintain the parental lines that's our A line, B line and R line. So maintenance of A line is done by crossing with B line. So once we cross A line with B line the resulting progeny will be definitely A line. So this is the protocol for maintenance of this male sterile a line so while going for the crossing block we have to maintain an isolation distance of minimum of thousand meter or one kilometer from other fields of kambu and a planting ratio between a and b of four is to two can be maintained and four to six border rows of b line plant can be grown to increase the pollen availability and regarding the seed harvesting Always remember that we should remove the male lines first, that is our B line. Then only we have to harvest the seeds from the female lines, that is here, it is our male sterile A line. So now coming to the maintenance of B and R line, that is our maintainer line and our restorer line. It can be maintained like any other normal combo varieties following both field and isolation standards that have been followed for A line. So once we have uh, maintained the parental lines and we have enough seeds, we will be entering into the second phase that is the commercial hybrid seed production. Here we will be crossing A line and R line. So A line will be crossed with R line and the resulting progeny will be our hybrid seeds. So here the isolation distance uh, maintained is of 200 meters from other varieties of kambu. And a 5 meter distance should be maintained from same male parents. And the planting ratio between A and R line is 4 is to 2. And here also border rows of 4 to 6 R lines can be uh, maintained to increase the pollen availability. Again, seed harvesting is similar to what we discussed before. Remove the male lines first. Here it is R line. And then go for your female line that is here, the A line. Now, what are the advances that can be adopted while going for kambu hybrid seed production to increase its efficiency? So, we are going to discuss some four points. The first one is staggered sowing. So, this is done to synchronize the flowering between the male and female lines. So, for example, a kambu hybrid GHP 558. So, the female line of this hybrid is sown 10 days earlier than its male line so this will uh, synchronize the stigma receptivity of the female line and the pollen availability or the pollen dehiscence of the male lines the second one is we can go for the adjustment of flowering date and we can adjust the flowering date by adopting some simple cultural practices or simple agronomical practices if the difference between the male and female parent is only less than a week so uh, we can go for cultural practices or we can go for spraying of chemicals for example in a lagging parent or a late flowering plant if we can spray two percentage of dap or urea solution for two to three times at two to three days interval this can lead to an early flowering similarly 
we can go for irrigation adjustment if we can withhold one irrigation in advancing pattern or early flowering pattern it can delay its flowering if you are giving an additional irrigation it will lead to a delay in flowering so the fourth one is called jerking so this is moreover uh, done specifically in kambu so it is done after 20 to 25 days after transplanting so here we will be removing the early formed ear herds of first tillers and this will lead to the uniform flowering in other tillers so unlike in any other crops that has been previously discussed the roadblocks or the difficulties related to synchronization of flowering is very less in kambu due to certain factors and these factors has been listed out here so the first one is tillering habit so the tillering habit of kambu is more uniform like if there are eight to ten tillers then all the tillers tend to be tend to grow together and tend to mature together without much gaps maybe one or two days of gaps but not more than that and the second one is the continuous supply of pollens and third one is the light weight of these pollens and the fourth one is the flight capacity of the pollen so these three characters uh, can increase the reach of the pollen so it can reach a wider range and definitely it can reach, uh, reach all over the field and it can increase the hybrid seed production again the last point is the pollen viability and the stigma receptivity so this tends to be much more longer so we can uh, synchronize the flowering by doing our cultural practices by intervening using the chemical sprays so we can use many options to synchronize the flowering and also if we can go for staggered sowing also it will be very flexible in kambu due to this uh, longer receptivity and the pollen viability so so that's all about uh, the hybrid seed production in kambu so we will meet in another crop in next lecture thank you